Let me ask you a question about the, the talk you gave on October 31st in Houston last year, uh, Mr. Holbrook. Uh, this is the talk that Buck asked you about. You talked about how important it is to your credibility as a fracker to get UB on board. How did you get them on board? Did it involve a money transfer to UB or its affiliate foundations or the promise of a money transfer? And second, as you were getting UB on board for your efforts, did it help to have UB Professor of Geology, Robert Jacoby, on the Norse Energy payroll, as he was at the time, until September of 2011? Did that ease your negotiations with UB? <laughs> well, let's see if we can, we can make some sense out of this for you. You seem to be a little bit confused. The statement that was made, and I think the, the gentleman Bucky there uh, did a pretty good job of, of reading most of it, was the importance of the industry giving academia an opportunity to have the facts and to be able to reach conclusions which would instill greater public confidence. Because there's a natural propensity out there to be skeptical of industry. I've commented before that Einstein could be up giving the theories of relativity. There'd be those of you, if he was up here and sponsored by the industry, questioning it. So the point now that that particular statement was that we are looking to work. John and I serve on a public uh, information uh, task force that is geared toward going out, reaching out to various industry. We worked with Jamestown Community College on helping them develop programs so people can learn how to be well tenders and engage in other activities so they could actually get jobs when the industry had those to offer. We've worked with the University of Buffalo. We encouraged them after sitting down and discussing with, with their geology department how to put together a lecture series to give the public the opportunity. We didn't have any role in deciding who they chose to bring in, but we encouraged them to have a better, better informed public. So this is all about what I would hope most people associated with academia would be looking for, which is the opportunity for the public to get all the facts and to get a full and educated understanding rather than the hysteria that's been associated with much of the information out there related to this industry. So that was rather skillful, but it didn't respond to the questions at all. <laughs> and, I, I, and I don't blame you. No, I don't blame you. What, what, part, what part are you missing? The, the whole question? The whole question? How did you get UB to come on board? Oh, did okay. You offer I'm sorry, money? I thought I addressed did you, that. Did you no, I didn't offer that. Did you offer money no. to the University of Buffalo? No. Or did you suggest that you would? And was your getting UB on board? With hydrofracking and this disaster of a shale institute. Well, now, now, you're, now you're, you're editorializing. Would you allow me to answer the I'm question? I'll have to do so. Okay, Jim, let me answer. No, I, I think I think Jim, I heard it. Right. Right. So, so to allow it, no, I, I heard it. The second part of the question was to finish the question. Was it helpful to have Dr. Robert Jacoby, Professor Robert Jacoby, an employee of Norse Energy, on board with you at Norse Energy? And at the same time, a member of the geology. I have a high Did regard that help you to answer your question. I have a high regard for Dr. Jacoby. Uh, he was not involved at the time when we met with the geology department. The geology department at UB expressed a concern that there was a lot of misinformation coming out from other institutions, particularly in New York State, in central New York, in the Ithaca area. And they wanted to have the opportunity. Are you going to listen now or are you just going to pout? Okay, thank you. Answer the question. So there was a concern that the University of Buffalo had that there was a gap in knowledge. And they felt as an academic institution there was an opportunity to fill that gap. So what they asked is what process did we see out there? And John and I were involved in that process of sitting down and talking with them. We talked with a professor that was at the time an adjunct professor at the law school uh, who also engaged in that discussion and acted as somewhat of a bridge between the industry and the university to talk about what we could possibly do to better inform the public. So, no, Dr. Jacoby did not have a role at that time in, in, in that activity. To my knowledge, I don't think Dr. Jacoby uh, ended up being a speaker at any of the, uh, uh, the lecture series that took place. He introduced every speech. He may have had a, a role in saying yeah. uh, some of the people. I was, I was there for a number of them. I don't remember that. But, I would think that that would be entirely appropriate. Dr. Jacoby is a well-respected geologist. We hired him at one time, and he, he worked for us for several years. Uh, and he, he does excellent work, so uh, I wouldn't be surprised at least if he performed that role. The key thing in all this is you can look for boogeymen. 
you know, in every closet. But the important part of this is you have a well-respected university that has taken the time to study the issues and to give the opportunity to the public to have a better understanding of the facts and not all the fiction. We are seven minutes over.